Hey kids, it's JJ. How you doing? I have been gone for a couple of days. It's been uh, pretty hectic over here. Anyhow, I got a really cool review for you today that I've been really psyched about for a while. Um, and that is on a new antenna. Bam! Check that out. I've been waiting for this. Excuse the notes on the hand. I've been waiting for this for about a month. This is the Farview patch antenna. Uh, this actually does left and right hand. Okay, this is a phenomenal. I let me let me let me start this out by. I absolutely love Farview. I support them 100%. Uh, they, they don't know who I am, but I use them on absolutely everything. Uh, I did a build video on how to make your own Farview. You buy the kit from them for like five bucks or whatever it is, and then you, they give you a soldering jig and you solder these up yourself. I have never bought. A um, and I honestly don't buy a lot of antennas. I make my own, um, but Blackhawk has bought a few of these off of uh, not not Farview, but um, whoever the brand is, off Banggood or Amazon, and his have never been better than mine on reception. So Farview is really cool because it's actually open source. You can download the prints to all of their antennas and have the boards made in bulk, like my buddy Nick in Serbia did, and you can uh, build them yourself that way. Um, I have no desire to do that. I do make all my own antennas, but um, I buy the Farview kits because I just like to support them. I think they're phenomenal. I pre-ordered two of these. Bam. Um, oh shit, a month ago maybe? And uh, these are basically left hand. It's called a triple feed, triple feed patch. And yes, I'm reading notes on the side here because it's too early in the morning. Um, it's a left hand and right hand circular polarized antenna. And how this works, this is all that came. I didn't get my Farview sticker, which really sucks, but um, this is all that came. And if you look at the back, open source hardware, creative commons by da 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 da. Keep this area clear. And if you see there, you can see the, uh, the trace inside there. You got, if you're a lefty, you can screw it on lefty, or righty, you can screw it on righty. Bam, there you go. And then you get this, which I think is fucking awesome. You get a 50 ohm terminating resistor. This kills whichever side you're not using, so it doesn't dilute your uh, your decibel range. And then you get a slinky, okay? This is so you can mount it and get a good angle on your patch. So what you would do is right hand, in my case, because I run right hand, and then put your terminating 50 ohm resistor on the other side, bam, slap it on your goggles and you're done. This is bad to the bone. I cannot wait to try this fucker out. Um, I have never, I, I just get phenomenal range with the Farview equipment, so I just, I absolutely love them. I did order two, uh, might sell one to, or give one to uh, Blackhawk, or I might just keep it and put it on my other backup goggles I haven't decided yet. I, it's kind of scuzzy out today. I'm gonna try and get out there with one of my drones, and I'm going to do a range test on these. And as you know, with, with patch antennas, linear patch antennas, the bandwidth or the decibels is this. So the greater the decibel, like say you've got a 20 decibel antenna, this is actually your spread. So you better be staring right at that quad. If you've got a three decibel, it's not as powerful, but you have a wider spectrum. Does that make sense? So yes, a 20 decibel antenna is gonna have a bandwidth like this, and it's gonna go like two miles, but you better be looking up her skirt, right? Whereas if you have a five decibel, you're, much more wide, but you don't have as much throughput. Um, I don't even know what these are, to be honest. I'll have to look them up. Um, but yeah, absolutely amazing. So what we're going to do, hang on a second. We are going to take our new commanders, which I think are just phenomenal. And I haven't even had a really good chance to test these in the field a lot. I'm going to unscrew my omnidirectional pagoda. And I'm only going to use the Menace, which this is a really good patch. And I'm going to fly EWOD probably, one of my drones, so you can see the FPV footage or the DVR footage. And you will be able to see how high up we are and how far out we are. And see what our range is just with the patch. I'll try to keep looking straight ahead at it. Then we're going to turn around and go behind us and see how far we can go that way. Uh, I might make a radius. I'll do the video and I'll narrate it so we know what's going on. Then I'm going to take this off. I'm going to slap on a far view. And uh, that's what we're going to do this exact same test. 
and we're going to see which one performs better. My guess is that this one's going to have a better radial capacity than this one. Radial capacity meaning this way, okay? Um, and the medicine, this is, this is like one of, as far as I know, one of the best patch antennas you can buy. So we're going to compare the two. Then in a separate video, probably, hopefully tomorrow, I'm going to do a physical range test on these with a drone. And I like doing it with a drone because if this goes farther than my um, FPV signal, I can just hit return to home, bam, and she'll come back. Whereas with a quad, you know me, I'm going to lose the fucking thing. So um, that's that. And uh, let me go over the specs real quick. Um, Martin Bert and his co-worker Robin... Robin Thenis. I'll put a link to the description where you can buy this. I think it was a $20 patch, guys. And you don't have to build this one. It comes built. Um, game changer. So many things make this a game changer. Not only does a single patch work for both left and right, but also has a much higher actual radio, radial ratio sorry, than most FR4-based patch antennas. Um, you can read this on your own. First thing that really sets this, blah, 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 blah. Uh, include short coax and a 50 ohm dummy load. We knew that. Um, and it shows all this stuff. Let's see. Let's see. Bandwidth 660 megahertz. Center frequency 5.8. So um, I really don't care what specs say. I just had a guy busting my balls the other day saying that I didn't read read out the specs on a flight controller and he got all bitchy about it. I'm like, I'm sorry. You guys can read the shit yourself. I'm just giving you my opinions on this. So, you know, you can read it. Um, I want to know what it does in the real world against this guy we're only going to use this and we're only going to use this and we're just going to see what happens um i think it's going to be really really sweet so um that i'm going to try to do today it just depends if it's going to be raining or not ewad's waterproof but i don't feel like standing in the rain a couple things i don't love um i don't love the construction if you look at that it's kind of yeah, I mean it's it's built really well. Don't get me wrong. And this sucker, they gauged it. There is no. You can see there's an angle on that one rod in there, but there is no angle on this. It is perfect. Um, but what I do with these is I actually take silicone and I smear it in there. Okay, I'm gonna do a little uh, tech tip here. Um, if you look at my Pagoda antenna build, one of the things that I strongly recommend you do on any Pagoda, whether you build one or not, is you take Oop, shit. RTV, silicone, clear, preferably, but you can get black, white, doesn't really matter. And you smear it in here, and then you take your finger with a rubber glove, because silicone's annoying to get off your fingers, and you smear it in there and let it sit overnight. What this does is this keeps these from collapsing together in a crash. These two discs, and the third, are your tuning. If you crash, when you crash, and these two get bent together, bam, you're fucked. Your, your frequency, you're not going to get as good a range. This bit down here is pretty easy to arrange, but you can actually put silicone in there too if you want to. Um, but that is something you absolutely, absolutely should do. Whether you're using a far view or any other Pagoda style, just take, it does not affect your range. I've tested this. Put silicone in there, make it nice and neat. Every single one of these pigs that I own, and it's a lot of them, have that little Oreo cookie shit in there. Um, good math, kids. Do it. It keeps your tuning good. Here's another trick. Let me grab a glove. Okay, this is going to be messy. And uh, I kind of screwed up. I bought the wrong silicone. I usually buy clear. Um, so this is going to be kind of fugly. I'm going to use this just because I don't care, but I'm actually going to throw it away after this video because I don't like white caulk. <laughs> and actually, it's not caulk. It's... Uh, Silicone adhesive, which works just the same, but it is a little bit lighter than the clear. Take this little Amway. This is the same principle. If you bend these, you lose your tuning. You will not get as good reception. So what I do, I buy a big tube of silicone caulk. Again, preferably this stuff. Just good old-fashioned adhesive sealant, because this is literally like liquid rubber. Yet it takes forever to cure. You have to do it overnight, and you can see I've kind of broke this up a little bit um, and actually I think I might just use this uh, I'll give you an example of what I do though I buy a big tube of that and I take a piece of Tupperware I put it in there and then I dip the antenna in there and swirl it around and then I take the rubber glove that's on my hand and I clean it up so this time we're just going to use the stuff I like because I don't I don't love that white shit okay now this looks terrible but it'll look cool in a minute 
just get a big old glob on there. Now, obviously, this is going to add about two grams of weight to your build, but it is essentially, shit, this is gone, son. Not enough, but essentially, this is basically encasing your antenna in a rubber ball. Okay, it smells like ass. Actually, it smells like mayonnaise. Um, I do this, yeah, it's two grams of weight for you naysayers. Oh, it's two grams of weight. Um, I don't care. I would rather have two grams of weight that take an eighth of a second off my flight time and keep my antennas. Th this antenna will not break, like ever, okay? It adds a little bit of weight. This is true. Now, with the Pagodas, it really doesn't. It's such a nominal amount of weight that you stick in there. I, I wouldn't even worry about it. But for these guys, and you can make it, you know, get all artsy-fartsy with it all you want. Bam. There you go. Now i got to take this glove off. Hang on. That's it. Make it as neat as you want. I'm never going to use this antenna, probably. Um, but... That's going to harden into a nice solid rubber ball, basically, and you can crash the shit out of this thing, and it's going to bounce off the ground, and these are never going to go out of tune. Bam. That is good insurance for two, $2 a tube or wherever you pay for that stuff. And I do the exact same thing with these. Okay? Um, hang on. Here's another really good tip on antennas. Always, these are all you're doing here is basically putting a rubber washer in here to keep the gauging. That's it. Same thing with that. Uh, I just stuck that in my helping hands over there so it dries overnight. Here's another great trick. One thing people don't consider I don't know how many of you uh, use Loctite to put your antennas on your birds. Uh, it's probably a good idea because if your antenna vibrates off, <laughs> bad things are going to happen. Here's a trick though. One thing you don't want to do is cover this whole thing in Loctite and put it on because what it does is it kind of shields your ground. Uh, you don't want that. What I mean by that is you're, you're basically putting a laminate or a cover insulation over this and you might not, it's not definite, but you might not get great conductivity through your shield or your ground. So here's a neat trick to do. You can do this on your quad, do this on these, whatever you want to do, because I will be doing it with these. Um, unscrew them about a third of the way. That way you've got good positive contact. Take your schmutz. This is blue Loctite. Put a little bit on there. Just like shown. Screw it down. Now, what you've just done is you've still achieved the Loctiting. It might not be totally as strong, but that's an antenna. You don't need to be balls with it. Um, and what that's going to do, though, three-fourths of that, as long as you've got a decent connection on there, you're going to be fine. Three-fourths of that's still nice and bare inside and getting good contact, but you still have Loctite on the inside. You can't just take this off and put it on the top, because if you do, by the time you screw it down, it spreads the shit all over the place. So unscrew, the, back these off a little bit, about a third. Put a little drop of Loctite on there. Bam, hand tight. It's all you're going to need. You do not need to wrench it down if you use Loctite. Same thing goes with motor bolts, okay? Um, when you're using motor bolts and you're putting Loctite on them, if you do, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, just like barely snug, bam, they're done. I mean, so you don't want vibration in your motors. But you do not have to wrench the shit out of them if you have Loctite on. Bam, good math. So that's what we're going to do with these antennas. I'm going to try to do it today. Uh, I'm not sure what my schedule looks like, but uh, I definitely want to see if there's a huge improvement of this versus uh, the Menace. And like I said, we're going to do solely the patches. No other antenna on there. And we're just going to do a basic performance review and see how it goes. I'll put a link in the description to this antenna. Um, I can tell you right now I'm going to like it better than that one because it's going to be better. The, the, this dude knows what he's doing. This guy, designed by... Martin Bert, I'm assuming that's right, is the guy who basically invented the Pagoda antenna. Ain't no slouch. So um, I'm pretty sure this thing's going to kick the living shit out of every other patch I've ever tried. Um, so I'll try to get that done today. That'll be part two, or I will get it done tomorrow. But either way, that's coming quick. I got a frame review coming up tonight as well, and probably our uh, range test with this coming up tomorrow as well. So 
Keep shine side up, kids. Have a good one. Let me know if you have any questions. And if you got one of these and you've already tried it, let me know how you like it. Talk to you later. Bye.